The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and this is a very important package. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. This contains the Trinamic Open Source Ventilator Project a ventilator for COVID-19 patients, fully open source that everybody can produce out there. And it has a very good chance of being medical approved quite soon. Let's check it out. First, I want to address some things. I did not build this machine. This is the work of Trinamic, the German company that brought you the TMC stepper drivers that you know from a lot of silent 3D printers. Trinamic has decided to go in on the fight against COVID-19 with the power of the maker movement and the open source community. So this project is fully open source. The goal is to build a ventilation machine that fits the medical standard so it can be actually used in hospitals and it can be produced locally. So hospitals that in, are in need of ventilators for their patients can download the files and get them made locally. The open source community has done a great effort in the fight against COVID-19. Think of all the personal protection items, the PPEs, face masks, and also a lot of ventilation projects. But here's the catch. Maybe that's the kind of German dude in me, but if you want to do good in the world, you have to do it right. And a lot of ventilation projects are approaching it not in the best way. So ventilation is a very complicated topic. It's not trivial at all. Most people, when they hear ventilation or respiration, think of the actions that you do when you are giving first aid to somebody that stopped breathing. That is not what a ventilator has to do in case of a patient that has damaged lungs. It's much more complicated and it's not trivial. I have to emphasize that I can't even Think about how important it is that you get this right. Because if you ventilate or respirate a patient that has damaged lungs, even in the slightest wrong way, you will possibly kill him or her, or at least damage the lungs further. So you have to get this right, no matter what. So the awesome folks at Trinamic decided to start this open source ventilator project. They are specialists in motion control. And motion control is what these ventilators are doing. They are controlling a motor in regards to sensory data, process that data and act accordingly. That means that the pressure that the airflow is going in, additional oxygen that is added into it over a valve uh, gets mixed with the air and also the pressure that comes out is monitored at any time and the device reacts dynamically to all these sensory data. So it's not just pumping air in and hopefully the patient breathes out. No, it's very complicated and it has to be done perfectly. So they decided to use their knowledge and their stepper drivers to build a custom board that you can put on top on a Raspberry Pi that controls the motors and reads the sensory data. They also have made an additional board that carries pressure sensors. These are the most expensive items in the bomb. They are high precision and they are suitable for these medical applications. So there is no guesswork involved. It's science and doctors can at any time control the whole process. They can set pressures, volumes and a lot of uh, complicated values that I don't understand at all because I'm not a doctor that is trained for these things. I talked to some doctors and also Trinamic talked to lung specialists to know which of these uh, values are critical, what this machine exactly has to do to be suitable for a hospital environment. 
So what's inside that box? As you can see, the main body is 3D printed and it has acrylic laser cut panels, so you can see the inside. That is not needed, it's just a nice touch so you can see what's going on in there. The main brains of the project is a Raspberry Pi 4. On top of that, there is on one side the official uh, Pi touch display, the 7 inch model, and on the other side, Trinamic's own driver board. This contains the motor drivers and the motion control parts. And on top of that, there is currently a hand soldered version of the pressure sensors. So the pressure sensors on a hand soldered board stacked on top of that. As of filming of this video, they are preparing the files to have that board as well pre-made so you can download all the parts that go into that and have them in production. And also the add-on board by Trinamic with the motor drivers and stuff, that is already available at Trinamic. In addition to the electronics, there's of course a power supply, a fan, this is the correct type that is used for ventilation. It's not just any blower fan or, or these bags that you see often in, in ventilation projects where you just squeeze the bags. Those are for emergency respiration. So precision is what it's all about. And they try to achieve that with this system. It's also able to connect to Ethernet so the data can be monitored remotely and the doctor can jump in if something goes wrong and the device knows what it's doing. I tried it out on myself because I'm not afraid. I trust them that they know what they do and it immediately knows that there is no patient connected. The sensory data doesn't make sense. If I slowly breathe in and out, I know that it's, I feel that it supports me and it dynamically reacts to how I'm breathing. That is really interesting. So if I'm breathing heavily, it will go down a bit, but it will maintain the flow. So it monitors my oxygen flow and also my pressure and knows when it has to assist me to reach the set levels. I played around with the levels to see what's more for heavy breathing or for light breathing and it, it assists. It doesn't force uh, the air into my lungs. And that's really interesting. It also has an effect that I encountered after a few minutes that I um, change my rhythm according to the device and my own force gets slower over time so I can get more assistance. So you see that these, it's, it's a, a, a very intelligent device that, uh, that dynamically adapts to the person that is breathing with it. And that is what a proper ventilation apparatus does. The interface is completely controlled over the touch screen. That works pretty good. They made their own interface. You can have all the data at a glance. There's a doctor's menu where the doctor can set the data for the ventilation. And I tried to stop it, but it didn't stop. And then I got it. I have to tap on there and leave it there for a set amount of time before I can switch it off. So you don't switch off a patient by accident. The unit also complains about any anomalies and alarms the user and it also complains that it hasn't been calibrated for a set period of time. These are all features that professional units have and the point with this device is not to be better than a currently available ventilator or cheaper or maybe cheaper but it's about availability. So if somebody's in need of a ventilator and they can't source one in time, they can be produced locally and don't have to worry about licensing agreements or sales or maybe some overpriced items. They can get something that is good enough. And it, I don't mean MacGyver together stuff that I built, I mean properly engineered stuff that really saves lives. And that is crucial. It has to be done the correct way. And the overall goal, at least for me, in, in my opinion, with these open source efforts is one day we should have an open source alternative for every crucial medical device. It doesn't have to be the best, they only have to do the job. And if somebody is in need of a special device to get back to health again, there is a possibility that the hospital, the government or whoever is in need can source the parts produce it locally without any restrictions and save people's lives. That's the goal. 
And if we can achieve that, not only having respirators or ventilators, but also other equipment like defibrillators or what else you can think about that medical personnel will need and maybe can't get enough in the case of a pandemic, then we can avoid situations like we have now. And it's not over yet. So I'm wearing my mask, I'm supporting these efforts and I'm sharing these projects. So people that have the knowledge to build them correctly know of these projects and get involved with. And you should do the same. If you want to support this project, go to our homepage. You find all the information there. Share it with your local community and authorities and also uh, doctors, hospitals. Let them know that this exists. And if you can get involved with other projects that deal with open source efforts to solve these problems, let us know on the Element 14 community. And we are glad to share this information to our viewers the staff and everybody that can be involved with that. So the whole world can profit on the efforts that the open source community, the maker movement, engineers and everybody that wants to do good. Uh, yeah, let's share that. As of filming of this video, this is the only completed unit in existence. But that doesn't mean there will be no more. Everybody can produce them. The files, all the CAD files, all the eCAD files are fully open source. You can download them at the link in the description and produce that locally. It does not yet have a medical approval license or something similar. Trinamic was in contact with a lot of doctors and specialists, especially for lung treatment. So they know what is expected from a unit before certification. So if you have some contacts for uh, possible manufacturers that want to produce these, they can use these files and apply for the certification in your country. And that should be achievable, at least in my uneducated opinion. So how much does this cost? You will find a full bomb in a bill of material in the link in the description on our Element 14 community page. I can tell you now that the special PCB that goes on top on the, of the Raspberry Pi with the motion controls and stuff costs about 25 euros, including the PCB. The pressure sensors are the most expensive. They are about 68 euros at the moment of filming this. It's not easy to get a hold of enough pressure sensors possibly. So there would also be an option to have some efforts in making uh, other pressure sensors compatible possibly. So with the Raspberry Pi and the stuff and all these specialized medical equipment parts for the, the briefing apparatus, this is still a lot cheaper than a commercially available ventilator and it seems to do the job. While not everybody can join in on the efforts to develop open source medical devices, we can all do our part. So. If you go out, wear a mask, wash your hands and let others know how they can support the efforts to fight COVID-19. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.